Hi and welcome to part two. This is part two of a small series I'm doing just on melting some metal and doing a bit of casting and uh, obviously at the moment I'm just in a learning process so you know I've messed around with the basics of it and in the previous um, part one we did actually do a couple of casting some real simple stuff. In this um, episode we're going to have a look at casting a flywheel so this is a 3D printed item it's a split pattern, so we'll have one side in the cope and one side in the drag, and then we'll bring those together, and then we'll cast this item. So we're just going to do it in aluminium, uh, still in a learning stage of um, casting. So i really learning about um, the way gates work, um, and actually casting something like this, because it's not always easy to cast, you know, an item. Because if we've got the metal coming from one side, we can get cool spots, and you know, we can get deformities in the cast. And uh, all depends on how well the metal flows into, you know, obviously the mold. So anyway, what we'll do, we'll ram this up in the sand in the um, flask, and then we'll do the pour, and then we'll, you know, we'll obviously go through that process. So I'm going to ram this up in a container just to contain the sand. Um, I haven't got a dedicated area for doing this yet and I don't want sand everywhere. So we've got the drag on the bench at the moment, uh, which is we're going to put one half of the pattern in there and then the cope, we'll do that in a little while and we'll put the other half of the pattern in that. So let's start and get our pattern. So we want this upside down. And we want one half to be about there. So what we'll do is we'll obviously we'll have our um, entry point for the metal here at this side. So we want a bit of space over this side. So first things first, we'll just get some sand. So at the moment the sand is quite clumpy and we want to break that down because um, if we put that down alongside the pattern we may get some gaps because uh, of the clumps may not get you know obviously pressed down when we come to ram it. So we'll put some sand into the sieve and we'll sieve that sand through and that will give us a real fine sand over the pattern itself. So as you can see we've got some nice fine sand on there and then we can start to just build that up now with the normal sand.
So that's the first half done. So we'll just put some talcum powder on there to stop the um, two halves sticking together and you know obviously disturbing the sand when we come to part the two out. We'll just put a bit more on there. And we'll just lightly brush this over. Right now we'll start to ram up the other half of the pattern. In this half we're going to have a riser coming off of the centre of the boss here on the flywheel. I'll we'll get it more or less central. That should hold it in place for that and then we just want to put our filler pipe in where we're going to fill the material and of course I've got all the sand everywhere um, let's just see I want to get that sort of reasonably close so we'll put that about here and then we'll put that in place So as I said in part one, uh, we're more or less copying what my foot boy does uh, with his castings. So we've got a riser here and we've got our metal chute here, which obviously the metal is going to pour into. So we're just going to cut a basin in here just so we can aim the metal somewhere. Just smooth this off. Right. We'll just oh, we'll just get rid of this sand on here. Otherwise, this is going to go into the mold when we split the cope and the drag. So now we can split these two halves carefully.
So that's now the flask all complete. This side's come out really well. This side, I didn't ram it, you know, enough. But anyway, we're going to see how we get on. Uh, we'll pour it anyway. Just make sure this sand is all compacted in here. Um, yeah, it's a little bit loose, but it, I mean, it should be okay. It broke away a bit here. But um, obviously this is going to be machined at the end anyway. So it doesn't matter if we get a little bit of, you know, discrepancy or whatever. But we'll put the two halves together. And then we'll um, wait for the metal to uh, melt, get that up to temperature and let that soak for a bit and then we'll pour it. So we're all ready now to do the pour. So we've got our metal up to temperature and melted and has soaked for a little while. So what we'll do now, we'll take it out and we'll just uh, scoop the dross off and then we'll pour it in the mould.
So we'll now let that cool off and then we'll pull that throughout the mould and we'll see what sort of result we got. So the metal's had time to cool down, so we can it's still hot though um, to the touch, but obviously it's solidified, so we can now take the mould to bits and we can have a look to see what we got. It doesn't look too bad. <laughs> Oh, nice one. I'm happy with that, how that's come out. We've got a little bit of fashion, like I said, around the outside here, like where the sand had fell away, but obviously this is going to be machined. But no, that's come out really well. Um, it's got so much detail in there, you can actually see the lines from the 3D printing. Uh, that's still a bit hot as well. Um, yeah, so especially on the spokes, you can see where the 3D pattern is, you know, from the 3D um, printer. But obviously those, those all can be all machined out and whatever. But no, that's um, come out really well. I'm really happy with that. And that's, um, you know, there's no missing parts. That's all. The pour went really well. Now, I didn't know whether that might have got a bit cold over this side. And because obviously you're only pouring the metal in from one side. I didn't know by the time it got over here whether that would fill the mould completely before it, you know, before it sort of chilled off. But no, I'm really happy with that. That's come out well. So I've uh, got the flywheel mounted in the lathe. Um, I machined the boss on the other side just so I can grip it in the lathe. And all we're going to literally do is just um, see how our pour come out, whether we've got any porosity in here. So we'll just skim off um, just the side of the flywheel and just obviously the diameter. I'm not going to bother about the boss on this side because all I'm going to do is remelt this down anyway. So let's uh, let's have a go and see how we, so what sort of finish we get. <laughs>
Well, that's come out really well. <clears throat> Excuse me. No, I've just got a bit there where I just needed to machine a bit deeper, that's all. But um, no, overall, that's come out really well. Not ideal using this uh, carbide tip on aluminium, but uh, only just seeing what sort of, you know, I was more worried about porosity rather than um, finish. But yeah, as you can see, that's come out really well. I'm really happy with the results because uh, I didn't use no um, no additives in the melt. Um, some people use melt, you know, like fluxes and um, various things. But I just wanted to just try it without any fluxing. So uh, happy, real happy with that. So that's the end of this video. Uh, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.